Hello and welcome to this edition of FYI Weekly, your official source for the latest news and information from the city of Greensboro. Among North Carolina's five largest cities, Greensboro ranks as the second least expensive cities for homeowner costs when combining county and city property taxes and fees. The ranking comes as part of the city's budget and evaluation department's annual comparison of property tax rates and major user fees. When comparing Greensboro to Charlotte, Durham, Raleigh, and Winston-Salem, the Gate City ranks second with a combined city and county taxes and fees on average of $2,611 based on an assessed property value of $150,000. Charlotte has the highest combined taxes and fees at $2,854, followed by Durham at $2,758, Raleigh comes in at $2,676, Winston-Salem at $2,575 ranks as the least expensive city. While Greensboro's tax rate of 63.25 cents is the highest of the five respective communities surveyed, our fees are the lowest average annual homeowner fees, including water and sewer services, total $566 in Greensboro, which is 80% less than the average fees of a Raleigh homeowner. The annual report compiled by the city compares total household costs of government, including municipal taxes, water and sewer charges, stormwater charges, and other user fees. To read the complete property tax and user fee report, please visit the city's website. The Greensboro Police Department is accepting final applications for its Police Citizens Academy. Anyone interested in making a difference in our community should submit an application by Friday, January 18th. The Academy's interactive 13 sessions include demonstrations, practical exercises, and ample time for questions and answers. Senior GPD employees will cover topics including problem-oriented policing, constitutional law, forensic services, special teams, and patrol operations. Academy participants will also ride along with police officers, undergo a simulated field exercise using the firearms training system, and learn police defensive tactics. Chief Wayne Scott says we want our Academy graduates to take what they have learned to improve the quality of life in their neighborhoods, and we want our alumni to continue a long-term partnership with GPD to share responsibility and resources to make our city safer. The Greensboro Police Citizens Academy meets on Thursdays beginning February 7th, concluding with a graduation ceremony on May 9th. Greensboro residents older than 18 are eligible to apply for the Academy. Applications are available online. The Planning Department's latest Growth and Development Trends Report highlights some of the most important data and trends shaping Greensboro. A few examples include the unemployment rate continues to decrease, recent monthly rates are some of the lowest the city has reported since the year 2000. From an earnings perspective, average annual wages and median earnings have increased. Population growth as well as annexation and building activity continue to increase. Planning Director Sue Schwartz says Greensboro continues to grow at a steady pace. We are hopeful this trend will continue. The Trends Report and more information about Planet GSO is available on the city's website. In an effort to help each of us improve our quality of life, the city has partnered with Cone Health for a series of brief and informative videos designed to inspire you to make better choices when it comes to healthy living. Let's check in with our friends at Cone Health for today's news for your health. Choking is the fourth leading cause of unintentional injury death. In fact, more than 5,000 people died from choking in the past year. So now we're going to demonstrate choking relief to you. Keep in mind that uh, mild choking is pretty common. Uh, you're eating dinner with someone, they may just start coughing, and that's okay. Let them, allow them to cough, and, and a lot of times they can relieve it themselves if they do some really hard coughing and making a lot of noise, that's okay. But if the choking becomes severe, what's going to happen is they're clutching at their neck, they may be turning a shade of blue or whatever, but they're not making any noise. So that's when you know it's a very severe thing and it's an emergency. You need to act. So Austin is going to come in. He's choking right now. He's severe. He's clutching at his neck. I got to ask him, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you choking? Okay, so I'm going to help you, all right? So I'm going to turn him around. 
So to perform abdominal thrusts, otherwise known as the Heimlich maneuver, you take one hand with the fist, fist thumb side in, grab the other hand above the belly button, force it in and up. So I have to do this several times until I can relieve the choking piece, whatever a foreign object that is, out of his airway. And if I'm successful, then I just let him rest. And just keep in mind that you have limited time, four to six minutes um, of lack of oxygen that becomes an emergency and becomes more of a CPR emergency. The, the brain cells start dying, the heart can be affected, then you may have to go to CPR. Okay, choking relief on children may require uh, slightly different techniques. So if they're shorter, about the height of this mannequin here, you would just have to kneel down to get to their you know, stomach level and be able to do the thrust just the same way you did on adults, except just maybe on your knee. So same technique, just get down on your knee to get to that abdominal level. Choking relief for infants is a little different because of their size. Instead, what we'll do is we will use back slaps and chest thrusts. That means you'll be supporting the head at the jaw, tilting the baby face down, keeping the head below the, uh, the chest, and giving five firm back slaps. Then turning the baby over, still keeping the head down, five chest thrust. So repeat this while the baby is still conscious until the object is removed. Otherwise, if that baby quits responding, then you will have to lay the baby down and begin CPR. Well, the best thing to do if you're choking and alone is not go in a closet, not go in a restroom. You can cough very loudly, but if that doesn't work, you can uh, lay your uh, chest or your stomach over a chair or a table. But at the very least, go out where there are people around, make a, make a commotion. Let people know that you're in trouble so that they can potentially help you. So for someone that's too large, the uh, method would be to go under the arms. Or if it's a pregnant woman, you want to do under the arms as well because you want to do chest compressions will force just as much air out as abdominal thrusts. And obviously it'd be very dangerous to do abdominal thrusts on a pregnant woman. So it's best to go up here under the arms. Choking prevention uh, is especially important for children and infants. Obviously not allowing uh, young children to have uh, large pieces of uh, hard candy, or things that their immature digestive systems are not able to handle yet. For older adults, uh, obviously alcohol increases the odds of choking. Um, there are certain foods that are more difficult to digest or you know, if they take large bites of a bagel or uh, you know, a large sandwich, you're trying to cram too much in there at one time. Uh, snack foods like popcorn and grapes or nuts, those things can actually be small enough to just perfectly block the airway. So uh, you just want to be more mindful to chew it more carefully. Uh, those are just some of the tips that would work, but uh, there's no perfect uh, prevention other than just being more mindful about your eating. Thank you for joining me. I hope this information has been helpful. For more information on health and wellness for you and your family, go to conehealth.com wellness. And remember, don't hesitate to act. You can save a life. I'm Rob Emery. The highest honor to be awarded by the governor is being presented to a Greensboro resident. We'll have that story and more news coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. The Order of the Longleaf Pine, the state's highest honor for service, has been awarded to City Beautiful Director Kathy Cates. Cates received the award during her retirement party. She has dedicated more than 30 years of service with the Greensboro Parks and Recreation Department. Cates acted as Executive Director of Greensboro Beautiful. The nonprofit serves as the city's beautification agent, coordinating important functions on behalf of the city, such as urban forestry and horticultural advisory, as well as litter cleanups and neighborhood restoration efforts. The group also raises funds to support the city's four public gardens. 
As a result of Cates' leadership, fundraising expertise, and commitment to enhancing Greensboro and Guilford County, more than $10 million in private funds have been raised and invested directly back into supporting the public infrastructure, including the private financing of the construction of the Greensboro Arboretum and Gateway Gardens. Under her guidance, tens of thousands of trees have been planted, making Greensboro a greener, healthier, and more beautiful place. The Drama Center continues to celebrate its 50th anniversary by offering winter and spring theater classes at a special rate of $50, which is a $40 savings. Classes begin in February, and registration is currently open for newborns, children, teens, and adults. They include acting, characterization, monologue development, and creative dramatics. Backed by popular demand, the All Abilities Actors Legion for Teens and Adults with Disabilities will begin its second season. Performances of the theater for the very young, newborn to three-year-olds, will take place in January and April. You can reserve a spot by sending an email. For more information or to register for all other Drama Center programs, visit the website or call 336-373-2728. The National Association of Town Watch selected the City of Greensboro as a national award winner for its participation in the 35th Annual National Night Out. In August 2018, more than 150 neighborhoods celebrated National Night Out through an assortment of activities including cookouts, public safety displays, block parties, and events for kids. This marks the 23rd year the police department and city residents have been recognized for their participation in the national program. Greensboro is among 20 cities with a population of 100,000 to 300,000 to be awarded this year. Founded in 1984 by the National Association of Town Watch, National Night Out is celebrated nationwide and in Canada the first Tuesday in August. It is intended to heighten crime and drug prevention awareness, generate support for and participation in local crime prevention programs, and strengthen neighborhood spirit and police community partnerships. To learn more about National Night Out or to start a community watch program in your neighborhood, call GPD's Community Relations Coordinator at 336-373-2636. In an effort to spotlight and celebrate local artists, business owners, community builders, and essentially the next generation of leaders, the city is proud to partner with Action Greensboro to introduce our Made in Greensboro series. This day, we place the spotlight on the Ark Barks Dog Treat Company. Dogs are at the heart of one of the city's unique vocational trainings, the Ark Barks Dog Treat Company, the Spring Garden Street Bakery, where special dog treats are made by special hands. The All Natural Dog Treat Company is a program of the Ark of Greensboro. It provides individuals with intellectual or developmental disabilities vocational training while they work as staff bakers in an operational bakery. 21 people currently serve as bakers, with 8 working each day, Monday through Friday, making the treats, packaging them, and selling them. Jessica Kamir is the program manager at Art Barks. She says this project gives the team a sense of self-worth and purpose as the bakers learn skills which adds great value for a population that is often overlooked. Don Scales is the business manager and says a lot of their bakers have jobs outside of Arc Barks, which reinforces the skills they use in the workplace. The dog treats are also sold at Fresh Markets, Lowe's Foods, and Best Way Grocery Company locations. To learn more about Made in Greensboro or to see more images taken by photographers Jerry Walford and Scott Mothersbaugh, visit the Action Greensboro website at madeingso.com. The Civil Rights Museum is preparing to roll out the red carpet for its annual black tie affair. Coming up after the break, we'll tell you what's involved with pulling off this evening of elegance. Stay with us.
Welcome back to FYI Weekly. The International Civil Rights Center and Museum is a few weeks away from hosting its premier fundraising event. The Who's Who of Greensboro attends this signature soiree of the year. Joining me now to tell us about the 2019 Beyond the Barriers Gala is John Swain. He is the Executive Director of the Civil Rights Museum. Hello, John. Welcome back. Always good to see you. Thank you for the invitation, Carla. Absolutely. So tell me, when will the gala take place, and how much time actually goes into the preparation of this? Sure. This year, the gala is going to be on February 9th, our premiere day, February 2nd. Uh, we weren't able to uh, get. There were many events happening in town this year. so. Uh, we're going to be hosting ours on February 9th. And um, we actually spend a good bit of time planning this gala. Each year when the one gala ends, we launch right into planning for the next year. Uh, so a lot of planning and community participants have been involved this okay, year. Okay, wonderful. Now, you take this time during the gala to recognize individuals with different awards and categories. Who will make up the list of honorees and how are they selected? Yes. Uh, we start with a selection process with the board of directors and community stakeholders seeking um, advice from a, a number of people about who we need to honor um, and who would be most beneficial to the community. And so this year we have Mark Moriels. He is the uh, national president and CEO of the Urban League. Uh, he's going to be receiving our Austin Jones Award. Uh, our next award recipient is going to be Joan Trumpauer, uh, Mo Holland. She is a, um, a long-term civil rights icon. And as I was reading over her bios, I was just impressed at the number of marches that she was involved in, 50 of them by the age of 24, and um, how she's really been pursued and uh, has rubbed elbows with Dr. King and many. She was in the Selma march. Uh, so uh, we're looking forward to bring her in and she is a Delta. And she is a white woman. Most she people is, would be surprised she, to know this. She was one of the first white Deltas uh, to uh, be inducted into that sorority. So uh, we're looking forward to the Deltas coming out to support uh, someone from the community. Uh, our next honoree is going to be uh, Dr. John Mendez. Uh, he is a minister from Winston-Salem and has been involved in so much uh, on an international scale, civil rights, human rights, racial justice. Um, I've been quite impressed just reading through his bios. That's a lot to get your hands around. Um, one of our other honorees is Ms. Shirley Fry. She's going to receive a community service award for all that she does in this community. Um, I thought I knew her pretty well, but I started reading her bios and found that she was just into everything. And there are a couple of other things that we have in store in the, in the local uh, community for Ms. Fry a little bit later on this year. And our last recipient is going to be Janice Allen. Janice was a 1960s sit-in participant as well, often bringing her little brother down to uh, the FW Woolworths to participate in the sit-ins. Uh, she was a student at Bennett and was arrested uh, during the sit-in, so uh, she's going to receive our sit-in participant award this year. Nice. That's such a nice range of individuals and different uh, contributions that they've made to the civil Absolutely. rights movement and I'm looking forward to seeing them and hope folks will be inspired to come out and meet them. Um, tell me the event is now going to be at the Coliseum this year. Yes. Are you expecting a much larger crowd than years past? I certainly am anticipating that. Uh, for the last couple of years we've uh, held our events in a smaller venue and there are often people wanting to come and we're all sold out and have no additional tickets. So we have an expandable facility this year, the event center at the Coliseum. So we're hoping to uh, fill that. And the way tickets are looking right now, um, they're moving pretty quickly. Okay, and speaking of which, uh, how do you get a ticket yes. and do the proceeds go directly back into the museum? Absolutely. Um, People can come in to the museum and purchase a ticket, or they can go online and uh, pay the fee online to get a ticket to the gala. Or if they're extra lucky, um, someone might invite them uh, who has purchased a table already. And all the proceeds for this fundraising gala go to help this museum move along 
throughout the year. Uh, it's not just the ticket sales and the museum sales and the donations that come in, but the fundraising gala is an opportunity for the museum to bring a lot of people together from all kinds of backgrounds, not just to who's who in the community, but from all different backgrounds to participate because everyone that I've talked to, they want to support the museum in their own way. They may not have a thousand dollars, but they have a hundred and twenty-five dollars, and they want to be seen as supporting this community treasure. Okay, well I will certainly be there and looking forward to it. Yes. And uh, we encourage folks February 9th at February the Coliseum 9th. to yes. get their tickets now and be in store for a really nice evening. We're looking forward to it. Thank you, John. Thank you. Stay tuned for a little-known fact about Greensboro as we tell you something about the city. That's coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. One way to stay informed about what's happening in the city is by attending or tuning in to city council meetings. The Greensboro City Council meetings are open to the public, but if you cannot attend, we broadcast the meetings live right here on GTN, and we also stream the meetings live on the city's website. Council meetings take place at 5.30 p.m. on the first and third Tuesdays of the month on Level 2 of the Melvin Municipal Office Building located at 300 West Washington Street. The first meeting of the month includes public comments and special presentations. Meetings on the third Tuesday of the month focus on public hearings and city business. The fourth Tuesday is reserved for a meeting as needed. To review the council meeting schedule and agendas, please visit the city's website. Here's an opportunity to learn a little something about the city. The Tom and T. Cooper James Government Improvement Awards recognizes City of Greensboro employees who have devised innovative and impactful solutions that improve city services or productivity. John Gribble and Keith Watkins will each receive a $2,500 prize presented by the local commercial real estate developers. Gribble, a support services analyst for the Information Technology Department, negotiated to get 31 miles of fiber optic cable installed for Greensboro's use at no charge as part of a private company's franchise agreement. This saved the city an estimated $645,000. This project provides connectivity to Winston-Salem as well as data backup and sharing opportunities. Watkins, the GIS application specialist for Greensboro's Department of Transportation, received the Innovation Award for convincing the department to switch from a Trimble GPS device to an ARC GIS-based data collection service that can be used on smartphones to assist in mapping the department's traffic control assets. The new system has allowed the department to identify more than 550 state-owned, city-maintained signs that were not recorded using the previous GPS system. These signs amount to more than $29,000 of potential maintenance reimbursement from NCDOT. Coming up after the break, we'll showcase our department spotlight. But first, prepare to mark your calendar for all the great events happening this week on the town. Hey, this is Jody. I hope you had a happy new year and welcome to the latest edition of FYI Weekly. Interested in the spoken word? Head over to Triad Stages Upstage Cabaret this Friday and Saturday starting at 9 a.m. for the Poetry Cafe, a monthly open mic hosted here in Greensboro. Celebrating the art of poetry while connecting to community, patrons flock to build community, listen, and share. For more information on the Poetry Cafe, go to triadstage.org. The Community Theater of Greensboro presents Neil Simon's God's Favorite, which was produced on Broadway in 1974. A successful Long Island businessman, Joe Benjamin, has a demanding wife, ungrateful children, and wise-cracking household employees. Just when things couldn't get any worse, he is visited by Sidney Lipton, a.k.a. a messenger from God. This hilarious comedy is playing all weekend long at the CTG Star Theater. For tickets and showtimes, visit ctgso.org. Are you looking for an artistic outlet in the new year? Join us at LaVara Park this Saturday from 1 to 4 p.m. Bring a coat as we join artist Kat Kays for an art-making workshop. Explore mindful and focused meditation in the present moment. 
You'll also creatively construct arrows honoring your inner wild that will symbolically take aim to a purposeful future. Bring three or four small lightweight objects the size of a quarter or smaller that relate to your past and a pair of scissors. Space is limited and registration is required. Send an email to Beth Sheffield at greensboro-nc.gov to be registered. Also on Saturday, head over to the Carolina Theater for the Glenn Miller Orchestra starting at 7 p.m. The legendary Glenn Miller was one of the most successful of all dance band leaders back in the swing era of the 1930s and 40s. Today, the group is led by vocalist Nick Hisher, with the 18-member ensemble continuing to play many of the original Miller arrangements. Don't miss the big band performing live on stage. Go to carolinatheater.com for more information, including tickets and details on upcoming events. Bring your budding artist to the Children's Museum on Sunday from 3.15 to 3.45 p.m. for art studio time. Kids can unleash their creativity and explore various mediums and techniques. Cost is free with admission to the museum and the studio time is open to all ages. For more information, visit gcmuseum.com. Keep watching FYI Weekly right here on GTN to find out more about events happening on the town. Welcome back. The City of Greensboro has 23 departments and several divisions committed to serving you, our residents and visitors. Let's go behind the scenes in our department spotlight. Today we place the spotlight on Greensboro Parks and Recreation. The Parks and Recreation Department will host a grand opening celebration for the Barber Park Event Center and Ruth Wicker Tribute to Women. The event is scheduled on Friday, January 25th from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. at 1502 Barber Park Drive. The community is invited to tour the exhibit and event center after the ribbon cutting takes place at 4.30 p.m. Light refreshments will be served. The Ruth Wicker Tribute to Women will be the first ever exhibition of its kind in North Carolina that is dedicated to highlighting the achievements and contributions of women who influenced, transformed, and shaped the rich history of our city. The women featured in the interactive exhibit were chosen by the community. The exhibit is located within the new Barber Park Event Center, an upscale venue available to rent for weddings, corporate meetings, and other celebrations. The project was funded by the estate of Ruth Wicker in addition to bond dollars earmarked for Parks and Recreation. Straight ahead on the other side of the break is this week's Way to Go GSO shout out. Stay with us. As we draw to a close, we always want to end on a positive note with our Way to Go GSO shout out. This week's shout out goes to the Griffin Community Center. The center set the backdrop for community members to start 2019 with fitness in mind. Griffin Recreation Center hosted a New Year, New You health and wellness fair. The family oriented event featured body mass index and blood pressure health screenings, fitness demonstrations, and an opportunity to test your fitness level. That concludes this edition of FYI Weekly, but you can easily stay connected to the latest city news by linking to us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Be sure to download our weekly podcast, Talk City Greensboro. For all of us here at the City of Greensboro, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.